MMA fans, I am Jason Burgos for SureDog.com, and I am joined by a man who will be ha having a much more run-of-the-mill lead-up to his next bout in the UFC on August 31st. Well, as run-of-the-mill as a trip to Shenzhen, China can be, he will look to bounce back from a loss to Vincente Luque in his debut by putting a hurting on home country favorite Song Kanan, and that is Derek D-Rock Krantz, Mr. Rock, sir. Thank you for joining me tonight, less than two weeks away from your return to the Octagon. Yep, yep, thanks for having me. Now, your debut in the UFC is surprisingly common, even with fighters in, from the LFA, you know, super short notice and often less than a week like it was for you. I wanted to talk with you about your, your usual process in the lead-up to a fight compared to how this fight went on, like, what was it was like six days notice or even less. Um... In an interview with MA Fighting, you mentioned weighing 190 when you got word of the fight. Ten days out from a fight with a full camp, which this definitely wasn't. How far are you usually from 170? Is it 190 or are you usually lower than that? Yeah, usually uh, I was I was lying a little bit. I was uh, 197 that day. Ooh. Yeah, but uh, they were kind of freaking out on the weight cut, so I told them I could make it, and I made it. But uh, right now. I'm uh, I'm less than two weeks away. I'm I'm about 182 pounds. What was that cut for that last fight? Would it be? Could you say it was the worst cut you've ever had it gone through? Because it was so much so, and such a little bit of time. Absolutely, absolutely. I I, I definitely celebrated that Mother's Day, mm. and uh, um, <laughs> felt it. <laughs> In the same article, you mentioned you were helping teammates prefer for the fight that the fights they had coming up, and you know, and you weren't really necessarily training and, and preparing for a, a fight that you thought you had coming up. You always yeah. hear about fighters wanting to, to peak at the right time heading into a fight, Sh sharpness wise. Where did you feel you were going into that UFC Rochester fight compared to you know a normal camp? Did training with your teammates make the preparation easier, or was it just really? not your optimal level of sharpness you would prefer going into a fight yeah i would say if i didn't cut that much weight i would have been pretty pretty sharp uh i definitely had um you know a really tough time on that weight cut but you know i signed up for it i told him i could make weight so that was that was just that's that's all she wrote man <laughs> was there ever a time that it was bad enough you're like i don't know if i can do this or you were always sure you could figure it out somehow oh well you know uh that Honestly, that was the first time I've ever felt like health-wise I was in danger. Like Oof. maybe I might I might die from a weight cut, but uh, wow. I mean I never felt that bad before. And uh, you know it just it really opened up my eyes. Uh, I made sure um, this this training camp that my weight's already there on point. You know, if at most I should only have to cut ten pounds. And I'll be able to rehydrate and, and perform at my my full capabilities. What does something feel like, like that feel like? Like we've seen videos, like for example, we saw a lot of fans saw Aspen Lad a, a few, like a month or so ago with her really tough wake up. What does that feel like when you are feeling like you said almost like close to death? Like what is? I, I don't think anybody can really understand unless a fighter kind of explains it to them. No, I'm. I mean, it was it was a bunch of things. Uh, my throat swelled up. Um, Oof. My, it, it was, uh, I had a, a pain in my chest and, um, uh, I was, uh, pretty incoherent. Like <laughs> my mind wasn't there wow. and, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, you know, I, I guess I did it to myself. You know, it, it was just one of those things. Uh, it all played out, you know, I got a lot of respect for Luke A. Um, you know, he's a heck of a fighter. I've been following him, uh, since we fought, of course, I, um, man, uh, but, but, you know, I'm not taking anything from him. Uh, I mean, he hits hard. Um, but I feel like me with a full training camp, that fight could have gone way different, mm. but you know, those are all what ifs. Um, right now we're focused on uh, Song Kanan and, uh, you know, I get a couple wins, start making myself, you know, a little more noticeable in the UFC. Maybe I can call him out again. But right now it's uh, it's all about Song Kanan. Now, I'm glad you brought up that you feel like it could have been a different fight because in, in the fight, you were doing really good. I mean, you you were you hit him real big shots early. You took him down. You got his back. You even got a gate team. Was there ever a point in the fight? Because this is your UFC debut. You know, every fighter wants to know how they can stack up against that level of talent, even if they believe they can no matter what. Did you, was there a time you're like, damn, 
this is going a lot easier than I expected right now. Absolutely, absolutely. All until about my my body just gave up. I was completely mm. fatigued by the time by the time he stood up after we separated. My arms were shot, my legs were shot, and mm. I knew it was going to be a long night. Now, unfortunately, you know he he was able to get the finish later in the round, like you just mentioned. Looking <clears> back, <throat> because I know you were you you've mentioned in in media interviews you were clo- you know you were getting lined up for a fight with the contender series were there are there any second thoughts now or because you know getting off of to a loss in in the start of a ufc career can be you know tough thing to do because ufc unemployment is so unpredictable and stuff like that or is there zero regret because you know you've been in the sport 11 years you don't want to wait any longer especially since even the contender series isn't a guarantee that you're going to get anything exactly there's there's no there's no regret there's not a guarantee with the contender series um I feel like if I go out there, do my job, put on exciting fights, you know, be friendly, be likable, uh, I don't see why I can't stick around. What is was the, the experience like for you? LFA is a notable promotion. It does worthwhile shows a lot. So it, it's a good place to transition from, from into major events like the UFC. But when you are in the cage, going through all the media obligations before that, do you feel like the heat of that spotlight? Or was it because it was just so damn quick, such a whirlwind, you didn't really have time to let it like digest? It was just kind of just fun and exciting, that whole first experience. No, it, it really didn't digest till after the fight. Um <laughs> Walking out to the cage, I, I mean, not, I'm not going to lie, that was pretty cool. That was surreal. Uh, I enjoyed that, um, you know, getting in there. But uh, it really didn't set in like, hey, man, I've, I've, I have finally I fought in the UFC now. Mm-hmm. So it set in afterwards, and uh, it's still kind of setting in. I, I, don't, I don't call myself, <laughs> you know, I'm not a UFC fighter yet. I don't mm-hmm. have the fan base or the – or, or the following or the popularity, but I am a fighter in the UFC. So I plan on, uh, you know, reaching for the stars, making statements and uh, putting the whole world to weight roster, you know, you know, make them notice. Now, have, has there been a noticeable change for you? Like, has the social media gone up? Have you got more notice for the people that really don't get the sport when they say, hey, you do UFC, now you can say, yes, I UFC. Like, you know, like, has things changed for you? Have you become a little bit more popular and a little more uh, famous around the way? Uh, I mean, I guess you can say that somewhat. Um, you know, I'm from a small town. We're about 30,000 people, mm. if that. And, uh, you know, I've been since fighting regional and all over the place i i've created a pretty big name for myself beforehand now mm-hmm. now it's just you know i got i got this really cool title ufc in front of it now <laughs> you are a texas guy like you mentioned small town have and you you haven't had to do any real crazy traveling too much during mm-hmm. your career yet however for this second ufc fight like i mentioned earlier you will be heading to shenzhen china 13 hours ahead first when the location was offered, was there any apprehension? Like, uh, I don't know if I want to do this, or it was like the the in you know the, going far far away to some foreign you know in, foreign land. Did that intrigue you on some level? Well, you know, it, it was a little bit of both. You know, <laughs> I, I wasn't looking forward to cutting weight on an airplane. You know, mm. but I also I didn't I didn't want the matchmakers to think that I'm I'm the type of fighter that's hard to deal with. Right. So. So here I am, you know, <laughs> I've always wanted to go to China, but, you know, I won't be able to enjoy the cuisines or, or any of that because <laughs> I'm going to be cutting weight. Um, that- but it's still going to be a great experience, and I plan on going down there and, and getting paid. That's fascinating, too, because you never really think about that. I, like I mentioned, the 13 hours, but I didn't really factor in, you know, you're going to be doing it like week of fight i'm guessing you're probably going somewhere like seven days out or so what is weight cut on a plane like like what is the preparation for kind of doing some of the weight cut process on a plane yeah like? yeah well um you know i I've, I've talked to a couple folks about you know the whole whole flying for many hours and you know they talk about moving around a lot drinking plenty of fluids mm. wearing compression socks compression mm. clothing uh, try to help you uh, keep you from swelling, um, sweating after you get off the plane. Hmm. So I mean, it's I've heard a lot of things, and you know I'm I'm obviously try it all out because what I don't want to do is you know go to China and be com- 
completely just exhausted from a pr plane ride. <laughs> now, I'm guessing, is it seven days out you're going? Yeah, so I'll be leaving this Saturday. So, the, I mean, I've talked to some people that have done, like, long-term traveling, and they say, you know, it takes almost, like, a day. Like, for every hour you go, it, you almost need, like, a day of recovery. What are some of the other things you're doing when you get over to, to acclimate real quickly to get used to, like, are you packing, like, almost a whole luggage case of just your food? Like, what other things are you pre doing in preparation for what people have told you to get ready for something you may never do this again. You know, this is a rare thing that the UFC goes to China. So you're in a unique situation that many fighters are put into. Yeah. Um, you know, just I'm just bringing the necessities, dude. The, the stuff that I need to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to rehydrate well. Um, mm -hmm. You know, sauna suit. All, you know, all that good stuff to get, get my weight down. Um, uh, I plan on, uh, I'm going to start this Wednesday on uh, trying to change up my sleeping schedule mm. so stay up all night wednesday and try to sleep <laughs> day. And, and you know I'm, I'm trying to get get ahead mm -hmm. as, far, as much as i can but i still you know i'm still working so i got to help out and and once once i'm done with that then i can fully focus on making weight and fighting king king and song canon now What's fascinating is you're getting put into the old uh, Rocky, Rocky Four situation where you will be one of the fighters pitted as the foreign invader against a national representative in song. Um, are you excited for the role you will be put in by these fans as the hated villain from America as you enter this cage? I never really thought about it. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, my goal at the end of the at the end of the night is is to make more fans you know so i mean i, I plan on taking out their hometown boy but i'm gonna be respectful humble and try to make some more fans out there so there won't be any like uh, uh, a, a flag draped on you or any kind of really america song or just full-on america like america short you know anything unique to say look I, america's in the house nothing like that no, no, I'm not a showboat <laughs> like that. Maybe I should, but no, I didn't plan on it. Now, break down Kanan's song for me and, you know, explain what makes him a challenge for you. And on the flip side, what do you bring to the table that can cause him some serious problems on fight night? Uh, you know, I've watched video on him and uh, he's an all around good fighter. He uh, he likes to rely more on his stand up. He likes to use his kicks and he hits hard. So he's always looking for the knockout. Mm. Um, he's got submissions for victory. So, I mean, he's, he's got jujitsu. Um, so he's, he's, he's an all around good fighter. He's just tough as nails. He can take a good punch. Um, I just, I think, uh, I think I could test him a lot better than, than what, what other folks have. Um, I come with a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. Um, I hit, I hit just as hard or if not harder, um, Let's say I, I'm a black belt in jiu-jitsu, so I mean, it, it it's gonna probably turn out to be a really good fight. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people would say that for your debut, especially on a such short notice, you got in a way thrown to the wolves. You got a rank guy right out the bat, a guy who's on fire, rising talent, the vision. Do you feel Song it, it is as tough a test? For you as Vincente was maybe less so maybe more so how, how does he rank up against a guy going against a guy like Vincente which you did very well against early on um he you know every fighter has their good and bad attributes mm -hmm. um you can't really you can't really tell until you get in there so I'm gonna <laughs> take the fighter as you know he, he's he's just as good as Vicente or even better I'm not, I'm not looking past him um uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm respecting him as a fighter, and I'm going to go out there. I'm going to fight him at my best. I always like to end the interviews just getting an idea of what the, 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 the person is inside the fighter. You know, so fans that are watching them that maybe not, you know, maybe they're not following the social enough, and they're not knowing enough. Like, what's something about you? That that is unexpected, like that 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 has nothing to do with fighting. Personal passion, something you really love to do that people may not know about or may be surprised about. They go, "D Rock likes that." I what? I didn't expect, expect that. Yeah. Um. Well, uh, I like skateboard. Oh. I like to play video games, and I like watching anime. 
What's your favorite video games? What's the your three favorite all-time video games or video game series? I'm playing Devil May Cry right now. I love that series. Ah. I've always liked uh, Fallout, Red Dead, and uh, mm. let's see. Another good one. I enjoyed uh, my last uh, Witcher Witcher Three. I enjoyed playing that as well. Are you not? Are you a big like a lot of people love Madden? I'm not into Madden like I used. To. Are you a big sports game player or not so much? I, no, I don't play sports. I haven't played sports <laughs> in high school. <laughs> I played sports games back in high school. After that, I'm I was I was done with that. Are you a type of person so you don't want to go online and deal with all the nonsense and the trash talk? You have to, enough to deal with as a fighter. You're not going to trash talk people in video games. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I'm not in the whole trap. <laughs> now, I, I do every now and then. I'll get into a little phase where I want to do some, some, you know, Call of Duty or mm. or Battle, Battlefield or something like that. But for the most part, I, I like to stick to myself quietly at the house and mm. and, and just, just. And, explore a whole new world on a video game 